Welcome to the Broker Insights Podcast, the show where topics and discussion focus on everything Everything real estate. estate. With your host, award-winning multi-million dollar realtor, managing broker, coach, author, and Inman News columnist, John Giffen. John Giffen. The latest Broker Insights Podcast begins right now. Welcome to the very first episode of the Broker Insights Podcast. I'm pretty excited about doing this. This is my first uh, real professional, quote unquote, attempt to podcast. Um, I have uh, have been studying podcasting for the last uh, few months and have um, decided to um, really um, do it the right way. This actually is my second time to do a podcast. Many, many years ago, um, I think it was about 2007, 2008, uh, when podcasting really sort of started uh, on iTunes, I began um, uh, a small podcast, and I did probably about five episodes, and it was so um, rudimentary. Um, I had a very cheap microphone uh, recording into the computer, things like that. And so uh, a couple of months ago when I had talked to a few people uh, who I'm very uh, I have a lot of respect for in this industry who encouraged me to get into podcasting, um, I asked them, uh, how do I do it and how do I do it right? And so they gave me a tremendous amount of, uh, of information, gave me a lot of resources and uh, podcasting has come a long way. So I'm pretty excited about it. This particular podcast is designed for real estate professionals, whether you're an agent, whether you are a broker, a managing broker or principal broker. uh, This podcast is going to have a lot of information for you. If you are a consumer who's considering buying or selling a home, we're going to have some episodes for you. Um, It is uh, something that, uh, I really want to do and I want to do it on, on an ongoing basis. So I've decided that I will record a new episode every week, uh, to tell you a little bit about myself. I got into real estate, um, I guess almost 18 years ago, um, 17 and a half years ago, I believe, uh, it's a second career. I was in the printing and packaging business, um, and uh, moved to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and then a small stint in uh, Evansville, Indiana. And then uh, uh, my family and I moved uh, to the greater Nashville area, Nashville, Tennessee, uh, probably 25 years ago, 26 years ago. I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. That's what happens when you get younger. Um, You just can't remember things. But it was a long time ago. And um, the packaging industry became very competitive. It was printed packaging, folding cartons, and um, it was. I was a packaging broker, had my own company in downtown Nashville. And then, uh, as the 2000s started, the business got extremely um, uh, competitive, and we were uh, dealing with people in China. So, um, decided to close my company and um, dive into another career and. Uh, Uh, got into real estate and got my real estate license uh, here in Tennessee. Um, And then three years later, I um, got my broker's license and became a managing broker for an ERA franchise uh, in the Nashville area and then worked for another uh, national franchise for a brief period of time and then uh, joined uh, the company I'm with now, which is Benchmark Realty, uh, based in Franklin, Tennessee. But we have grown from a, a very small one office uh, in uh, Franklin to uh, seven offices in the greater Nashville area. And uh, we have all over 1,200 agents. And uh, I am now uh, director of broker operations where I oversee uh, uh, seven principal brokers. Uh, I uh, wa- uh, work with them and, and, uh, and also work with their agents. So um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, good, bad, and ugly in real estate over the years that I've seen. And about two years ago, I finished a book uh, that I had been writing for about two and a half years and published it in November of 2018, and it's called Do You Have a Minute? And it is available on Amazon, and you'll hear a little bit more about that later in the broadcast. But um, um, I'm pretty excited about that book. 
It's a great resource. And so a lot of things that I'll be talking about on the podcast uh, in the weeks, months uh, ahead will come from the book, uh, some ideas. But um, I just want to be I want this to be sort of a resource podcast for you uh, where we're going to share some ideas, uh, some of my ideas. But I'm also going to interview some folks. Um, I've got two or three people lined up. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about the importance of uh, uh, what I call belly to belly selling, uh, the importance of handwritten notes, um, building your sphere of influence. um, And uh, um, I may talk with a stager. Uh, and that would be good for not only real estate professionals, but also consumers. So some of the episodes uh, can be applicable to consumers, um, especially if they're considering listing their home um, or buying one. So uh, we'll just see where it goes. Um, and today, though, what I wanted to do was share some tips with you that I think um, right now, and I'm recording this uh, in July of 2020, uh, 2020 um, we are experiencing the, the infamous COVID, uh, coronavirus, COVID-19 coronavirus really since gosh, we're in our fifth month of this. Um, it seems like it's been going on forever, but I think we're going to the fifth month. Um, it is, uh, now, uh, surging again in certain areas. Uh, fortunately in Tennessee, I think, uh, we've been able to sort of keep it at bay, but it's uh, had an impact on real estate, but not a negative impact. Uh, we had a couple of months where we didn't see agents in our offices and um, things like that. But uh, we have never seen the amount of pent up demand that when you stop the economy for two months, and especially the real estate uh, industry, what happens when you open the doors back up? And that's what we're, we've been dealing with for the last um, really the last 60 days. Um uh, and maybe a little longer. Um, we are spending a tremendous amount of time uh, in multiple offer situations, uh, working with agents to get through multiple offers, how they handle those. Uh, we do have some serious inventory levels right now. Uh, no inventory really is is what that's about. Uh, inventory throughout the United States is down. Um, uh, we, uh, I know in the Northeast, uh, according to the National Association of Realtors, in a report that I got for May of 2020, uh, year over year, uh, uh, the nation is down about 5.1%. I think it's higher than that. It just feels like it's higher than that. In the South, um, uh, we're actually flat. Um, but in Nashville, um, and in the greater Nashville area where I am, it is getting, um, it is very tight. Uh, I actually took my son and daughter-in-law out. Um, well, I've been out with them for two or three weekends trying to find them a, uh, their first home. And we've had two multiple offer situations and uh, there's just nothing out there in their price point. And, uh, and they're looking up to about 300, $325,000. And so it's, it's tough. So it's a, it's an interesting industry, but um, with the, uh, um, with builders probably not building the amount of homes that we need, we've got a lot of people wanting to stay in place, um, in their current home. So they're not helping the domino effect. Uh, the average amount of time in a home has gone up uh, dramatically. Um, and right now we're seeing that, um, I think I saw a statistic not too long ago where it's about 13%, uh, are still in their homes. But, um, but anyway, uh, there's still business to be had. And I, and I, I'm really encouraged by that because the act, there is a lot of activity out there. So, uh, one of the questions I want you to consider today, as you listen to this podcast is what are you doing to create more business right now? If you think your business may be down, uh, uh, for any reason, maybe because your, your buyers are getting frustrated, they have nothing to buy and the sellers are not willing to uh, put things on the market. Well, there's still people listing their homes. There's still people who need to buy a home. And so I, I think I want to, uh, I want you to consider, um, I've come up with 11 ideas for you to think about. And, uh, before we break here in about a minute, I want you to, uh, consider the first few. Uh, the first one is, do you have a list of 50 or more people, uh, that are in your sphere of influence, your SOI? Um, hopefully you do. If you don't have a database, you need to have one immediately. And I'm not just talking about a mailing list. I'm talking about people who you believe, uh, are likely 
to refer someone to you, you know, some people say that uh, uh, it's going to be people who want to list or sell a home, uh, list a home or, or buy a home. Now, it, my sphere of influence were those who uh, I thought were most likely to refer someone to me. And yes, several of them did ask me to list or sell their home. But um, I really created a, um, a database that was designed on referrals. And I'm going to spend some uh, podcast on talking about referrals because that's, that's the way I grew my business over the years. So if you don't have a database, you need to have one. You need to start today thinking about uh, who should be in your database. But your sphere is very important. And within that sphere, you need to have the gatekeepers. And the gatekeepers are the top 10 to 15, 20 people who are the most likely to refer business to you. And these could be your accountant, your dentist, your lawyer, uh, your next door neighbors, the people you go to church or synagogue with, um, uh, people who know you, trust you, and love you. They're going to be more likely to um, uh uh, send people your way. Um, and so in those gatekeepers, have you talked to him lately? Have you picked up the phone to call them and you really need, need to, and, and that's number two. Have you called, uh, have you used that device that we call a telephone? Um, I know we have these iPhones and, and Androids that they're in our pockets, but we really need to use them besides just texting and, and looking at the internet. We need to use them as telephones and, and, uh, voice to voice communication is extremely important. So think about those top gatekeepers who are, probably could refer some business to you and you need to pick up the phone right now today and start calling. Number three is, do you regularly mail information, uh, or contact your sphere, um, through different, uh, avenues? One of the things that I've taught in my classes over the years to agents is you need to have a regular, um, drip program and, and it's just not mailings and and uh, that just have junk it is uh it is going to be um something that is of value and we'll talk more about that in another podcast because i'm going to spend some time on talking about uh true value marketing and what uh, does pay off and it's really inexpensive um but think about do you have a regular uh mail program uh, to your sphere of influence. Uh, when was the last time you did send out a handwritten note to past clients or prospects? Um, you know, and, and that's important. Um, I, uh, and I'm going to have, a, an entire podcast on the importance of handwritten notes. And we're going to interview, um, an agent who, uh, really was in the doldrums with his business. And I spent some time with him and he's going to share his story about how, um, the handwritten note turned his business, business around and probably got him about $6 million worth of business. Um, and the fifth one is, do you mail information to a farm area or a local subdivision? I still think farming's important, and, and farming takes time, but I think you should have a farm area. Uh, and uh, look at that. Uh, and if, if you have, how many names are on your farm list, and are you working them regularly? And then how many listings have you taken from that farm area? If you haven't over the last year or two, if you have been doing farming and you haven't got any listings out of it, look at the way you're farming. Uh, how are you touching them and, and things like that? Uh, and we'll talk about that in a podcast that will come up on, on the importance of farming because it does work. It just takes, it takes time, but it can pay off. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the rest of these. Uh, I actually have 11 of them, and so I'm going to talk about uh, – Fizbos and social media and some other things that can help you, um, you know, one, ask yourself where you are right now and maybe some ideas to get you off off point. So let's uh, let's take a break and I will uh, go over those when I get back. You're listening to the Broker Insights Podcast. Whether you're just starting out in the business or you've been at it for decades, your real estate career is about to take off. John Giffen draws on his experience as an award-winning managing real estate broker, million-dollar realtor, trainer, coach, and Inman News columnist to help agents just like you with all the questions you've wanted to ask. In his book, Do You Have a Minute? Inspired by hundreds of informal office chats with realtors that often begin, Hey John, do you have a minute? comes this comprehensive handbook exploring 50 different real estate topics, including what it really takes to be a successful real estate agent, how to build your new real estate business or make your existing one thrive, how to get the listing every single time, how to effectively work with buyers, 
Plus, John opens his personal files, making available more than two dozen charts, checklists, scripts, and forms that agents may adapt for their own use. If you've wanted a go-to resource that covers all things real estate, Do You Have a Minute is it. Available on Amazon in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook, and retail bookstores everywhere. Okay, so we've talked about the top five um, uh, on my list of what I really consider a self-assessment. You know, what are you doing to create more business? The next um, six of these are, are uh, important, too. And, and number six is, when was the last time you called on a for sale by owner? Fizbos. Uh, I actually got in real estate being a Fizbo. Um, and that's a long story and I don't have time today to talk about it, but we are going to have a podcast on for sale by owners because it is a great stream of revenue for realtors, uh, not only from the standpoint of, of helping them sell their home. And that's really not the reason you work with a FISBO. You want to use a FISBO as, uh, an opportunity to help them find their next home. And I've got a whole uh, chapter in the book on that. Um, Number seven is approximately how many hours did you invest last week prospecting for new business? Um, I have said this over and over to agents that you need to be spending at least two hours a day prospecting. Um, Some brokers have said uh, that they um, have told their agents to spend at least three hours, maybe four. I think two hours is good. And, uh, um, I, you need to put it in your schedule. I know no two days are alike for a real estate professional, but, um, you need to be able to, um, invest that time building your business. You've got to keep your pipeline full and that's important. So you need to look at, uh, how you can spend time on prospecting. Uh, where, uh, are you on your social media plan? Uh, have you looked at the best way to uh, develop, um, a uh, campaign for Facebook and Instagram or LinkedIn uh, and some of the newer platforms that are out there. Um, There are great programs. One in particular, uh, it's called Paradigm, is a great program that can literally do it for you. Social media has become um, sort of the center of the universe uh, for us as as realtors. So, uh, uh, and we'll spend more time on that. I'm actually going to uh, talk to, uh, we'll interview some people who are very good at social media and how to build, uh, just basically build a plan to help you uh, grow your business uh, via social media. Number eight is, do you have a regular time period each day set aside for prospecting? So it goes back to what I said on, um, you know, how many hours did you invest last week? And so now you need to figure out, okay, what is the, those regular uh, hours? Um, and I, I think uh, I've found that uh, uh, maybe an hour in the morning or hour in the afternoon or two hours early in the morning, things like that, uh, where you can really just devote to prospecting is uh, important. And related to that is number nine. What do you believe consumes the majority of your time? You need to really look at your schedule. You need to track your activities. How much time are you spending on social media? It is amazing when you look at Facebook and you start scrolling down the timeline of Facebook or Instagram, how much time that takes and um, just looking at that. Um, I sort of call it cranial pornography because it does consume amount of our our brain time. And and, uh, so you just need to balance it out. And uh, I'm not saying don't do it, but just uh, do it with uh, moderation. Number 10 is you need to list one creative marketing idea you've done in the past that has been successful for your business. I'm a real believer in don't, uh, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. Find something that you have been very successful at in the past and uh, keep on doing it and maybe make it better. Uh, And that's important. And the last one is when was the last time you held an open house on a listing for the public? Um, I have a chapter in the book on open houses, and I was an agent who really hated doing open houses until I figured out uh, why I was not utilizing the open house to grow grow my business. And there's a tremendous number of people who walk in an open house, they have two things, um, two things could uh, um, be drawn from them. One is, uh, do they have a home to list uh, or... Number two is, do they know someone who might be considering 
buying or selling a home. Again, it's another touch point, another opportunity to uh, have a, someone in your database uh, who you could reach out to, to um, uh, maybe who could utilize your services. So think about that. And I have a whole chapter in the book on that. And we'll do a, we'll do a, a whole podcast on open houses. And I've got uh, a young realtor who I have not talked to him yet, but I'm going to uh, twist his arm off to, uh, uh, to be on the show to uh, uh, talk to us about his success with open houses. And he's been very successful with it. So anyway, these are just some ideas um, uh, just to try to generate for you some things right now that you could do to, to build some more business. I know we're in the middle of the summer and if you are a busy realtor, you are, um, probably doing a lot of deals, closing deals, but consider, um, uh, real estate can be seasonal and depending on your market, um, you may be uh, slowing down towards the end of the summer. Uh, we really don't know what's going on with COVID. But one of the things you have to always be doing is how can you generate more business? Your business, your, your real estate business, your practice of, of real estate cannot survive without prospecting and filling a pipeline. It is, uh, I've always equated real estate like a EKG. It's up, down, up, down. It's uh, either feast or it's famine. Uh, ask my wife about famine. We had some famine when I was selling real estate. Um, she was uh, distraught when I only sold maybe 12 or 13 homes in a year early in my career. Uh, but she was excited when I, I closed a lot more than that. And uh, uh, But the reason I was able to close consistently a lot of homes over the years was that I was consistently prospecting. I was always looking for new business. Uh, in that great movie called Glengarry Glen Ross, I remember Alec Baldwin saying, um, OBC, always, or ABC, you need to know ABC, always be closing. So, uh, uh, so you need to figure out how to get that business so you can always be closing. Um, so anyway, those are some ideas. Uh, I'm going to uh, spend some time in the next few podcasts. Uh, we'll talk about pro- uh Uh, some prospecting and I'll be a little bit more specific in certain areas that I talked about today, but I just wanted to sort of brainstorm and, and get you to think about uh, how you could uh, uh, maybe uh, get, uh, get some more business going so that you can enter the latter part of the summer into the fall on, uh, on, or whenever you're listening to this podcast, you may be listening to it in the dead of winter. Uh, which is another good time to uh, be thinking about uh, how to grow your business. So um, anyway, that's what I've got today. Um, thank you for uh, taking um, this time out to, to listen to this very first podcast. It'll get more exciting as we move forward. Um, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, I'm going to offer you a lot of resources for free uh, that you can download from my website. Um, all you need to do, if you want to listen to um, future podcasts, uh, just go to brokerinsights.net. That will take you to the podcast page of my uh, blog site or my personal site, johngiffen.com. And uh, there's a lot of resources there. There's also a lot of resources available on the book's website. Uh, do you have a minute book.com? And uh, also on that site, you can order the book. So. Anyway, those are some selfless plugs, and and uh, uh, and of course that commercial uh, that you listened to a little while ago was a good selfless plug too. But anyway, well, thanks for listening. And um, any uh, comments, uh, please drop me a line at john at johngiffen dot com. I'd love to hear them. And uh, make sure that you subscribe. Uh, these also will be on my YouTube channel, where um, you just uh, type in John Giffen, you'll find my channel there. So, until next time. Uh, Get out there and sell something and uh, make it a great day. Thanks for joining us on the latest Broker Insights podcast with John Giffen. Make sure to visit the show's website at www.brokerinsights.net where you can subscribe to the show so you can listen to each new episode. If you have a question or a comment for John, make sure you drop him an email at john at johngiffen.com. Or visit his website at johngiffen.com to read his Inman News columns and blog posts on how to be a better real estate professional. Also find a wide variety of invaluable resources and tools you can download for free that will help you grow your business and take your real estate career to the next level.